Today, we talk to two marine scientists about how they study some of the smallest and largest fish in the Red Sea. There's been a couple of times where I was close enough that I could have reached out both hands and touched two whale sharks. Oh my it was god! Good wow. times. We are PhD comics. And we want to know why. I've loved sharks since I was very young. For my fourth birthday, they took me to a zoo to see sharks for the first time. You know, they were holding me up in the glass, and I was like, that's a nurse shark, and that's a black tip shark. And all of these people were just looking at me because I was just like too short to even see the exhibit, but I was identifying the animals, and I was, I was already a nerd. We're here with Jesse Cochran. What is a whale shark? So a whale shark is the largest fish in the world. It's huge, but it feeds on very small prey. It feeds on plankton and it just swims through the water with its mouth wide open, just gobbling plankton down. How big are they? They can hit 15 meters. 15 meters? We're usually looking for this very specific school of fish that hangs around the whale shark. Things love hanging around whale sharks. It's this giant mobile habitat. What kind of fish is that? That is the big eye scad or yellow tail scad. We think that they're homing in on the sound of the fish because plankton, it's tiny. It doesn't produce a whole lot of signal. With sound, they have the largest inner ear in the animal kingdom. It's huge. So then if they can find the scad, they can find the... They can find these dense plat patches of plankton. One of the first things people notice when they look at whale sharks is they've got this beautiful patterning of stripes and spots. And the spot pattern uh, on it is unique to the individual. It's like a fingerprint. So we can use that to describe the individual sharks. Wow. So, Alex, we are on a boat. Can you tell me why we're on a boat? What are we gonna go do uh, today? So today we're gonna take you out to uh, a reef um, that's pretty typical of the central Red Sea. I'm interested in fish community structure, um, particularly as it relates to uh, distribution among the trophic groups. Trophic groups. Um, trophic groups would be guilds of fish uh, in terms of their role in the food web. For most reefs that are relatively pristine, uh, which are becoming more and more far and few between, we see that most of the biomass of fish uh, is in the higher trophic groups. And because of a lot of human influences, particularly fishing, we're drastically changing that uh, community structure um, across reefs throughout the world. So I'm interested in comparing the community structure uh, of our reefs here in the Central Red Sea um, to uh, those of uh, Central and Southern Sudan, uh, which is known as um, one of the last main refugia for, for, for fish in the Red Sea. Whale sharks in the Atlantic typically stay in the Atlantic, and there's some genetic data to show that they're starting to diverge, that there's, there's, there is some structure there. To get that genetics data, basically you take a tissue sample with a spear. And you spear the whale shark? It's, so yes, yes we do. It's got 13 and a half centimeter thick skin. It's a mosquito bite in comparison okay. to what, you've got this blackish skin cap, which is made out of teeth. Shark skin, all shark scales are, are teeth. It's. Their scales are teeth? Their scales are teeth. I have my list of about 100 or so species of fish that I've had to learn how to identify properly. I swim along a, a 25 meter transect and I, within a certain width of that transect, I measure all the fish that I see, every single one of them. My hope is that the stark difference between here and somewhere like Sudan can be kind of blatant proof of how far the reefs have been degraded and altered due to fishing in this part of the world. The first time I saw a whale shark, it was, there was loads of plankton in the water, just like you'd expect. So the visibility, even in the Red Sea, wasn't very good. So we're looking and it's like, there's nothing, there's nothing. Oh, there's a whale shark right in front of me. <laughs> and there've been a couple of times where I was, I was close enough that I could have reached out both hands and touched two whale sharks. Oh my God, good wow. It's a lot of fun. Okay, well, let's go see what you do. Let's go jump in the water. Let's go diving. All right. My whole time being here, we've watched over 2,400 fish. 
2,400 fish? Yeah, it's a long time. And you do it three and a half minutes each, so... Three and a half minutes each. What is that like? Two hour dive. Six solid days of stalking fish? Pretty much. I mean, I'm a fish stalker. 